I look inside myself and see my heart is black, 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 black. Greetings, Grapple Vision viewer. I'm Mr. Hargrave, and if you're a fan of Jushin Thunder Liger and sci-fi monster movies, then you have clicked on the right video, because today we are going to be looking into a hidden gem of Japanese cinema from 1995, Akari no Raime. Prepare yourself for mutated monster battles and full backside nudity. Make sure you like and subscribe and enjoy your creature feature. A year ago, we did a review of a monster movie featuring a Japanese wrestling legend. So why not continue the trend this year? Kenji Yamada was a young man who wanted to try out for the New Japan Dojo, but due to height requirements at the time, he was rejected. Not letting this deter him, Yamada would go to Mexico and continue to try to break into the business. During this time, he would tell people he almost starved just trying to get by and achieve his goals. And when some of the New Japan higher-ups got word of it, they did take pity on him and allow him to join the dojo. Yamada would make the most of it and put everything into his training. He would even win the Young Lions Cup in 1986. Yamada was a fine wrestler, but there was something missing. Jushin Liger was originally an anime about a little boy who would turn into an ancient god warrior to fight off the evil demons that try to cause harm. The series is one of many in the genre, and New Japan Pro Wrestling, having seen so much success with the Tiger Mask character, thought the leap would be worth making to have another go with one more anime property. Our guy Kenji Yamada would take up the mantle of Jushin Liger when the new character was purchased. It took a little while before the look of the anime show was essentially abandoned for what would become Jushin Liger's well-known and iconic look, but when the look came together, it really came together, and to this day, there are few more recognizable masked wrestlers. Now, with Liger in the mix, the fans were really taking a liking to him, and it wouldn't be long before the pro wrestler based on the anime would far outshine the popularity of the source material. New Japan Pro Wrestling had a genuine new star in its hands, and the investment into the anime property seemed worth every penny. Liger would have a run in the 90s that was just legendary, and really set a new standard for what junior heavyweights could achieve in pro wrestling. With all of this happening, it was decided that Jushin Liger would be a fine candidate for the next monster movie film adaptation of a wrestler. They had done this with the great Muda, but for this effort with Liger, they wanted to go all out. Instead of a short monster battle like the great Muda had, this would be a full-length feature film. As ambitious as it sounds, it was greenlit, and they went through with it. The effort was a retelling of the Liger character, but this time through the vehicle of pro wrestling. The same special effects artist was used for this film as for the previous one, Stephen Wang, and the writing duties were given to Takuya Wada for the handling of the character originally conceived by Go Nagai. We don't have a total on the budget, but it was distributed by Bandai and would run 90 minutes. A strange choice, but an understandable one for the film was to have an actor portray Liger when he was out of the mask and then to have the actual wrestler portray him when he was in the mask. This would give the actor the duty of reading lines and emoting with his facial expressions, and when Liger was masked up, or wrestling in the ring, he would be portrayed as the guy who is best at it. It's an odd choice to some, but it worked pretty well. Masaru Matsuda would be the actor chosen, and it worked decently. The movie would begin 
with Jushin Liger winning a bout and celebrating the victory, but he would slowly begin to get dizzy and fall from the turnbuckle. They helped him to the back to the dressing room as he slowly gets his bearings back. We join a young reporter named Miki. She is not taken seriously by her male co-workers, but is sent to report on the New Japan Dojo. Her enthusiasm for wrestling is presented in a childlike way, where she jumps up and down with enthusiasm at the wrestling articles. This kind of makes a bit of sense, as in this universe, wrestling is portrayed as being real as it can be. However, I still feel they didn't have to make her seem quite so immature. When she arrives back from her assignment, she's given another to cover the antagonist of our story. I would warn of a spoiler before saying that, but they don't hide that this is the bad guy even for a second. We jump to the airport where a new wrestler has arrived in Japan. His name is Bounty Viper, and he's shredded, and he walks like Robocop. Never trust a man that walks like Robocop. A we spend an entire scene of him staring in the mirror, doing the nostril thing Roman Reigns does as a substitute for actually learning how to portray an angry person. When we head back to the dojo, a wrestler named Riot Orf, portrayed by Shinjuro Otani, is having a hard training session with Yuji Nagata before he goes out to the street and speaks to a few people about one day becoming champion. Otani's character here seems like he's meant to portray a young wrestler who is just making his way, not a top rival to Liger or anything like that. He returns inside the dojo and informs Liger of his intentions. Liger hears him out and welcomes the challenge, and a kind of camaraderie is born of it. Rivals, but not enemies. This is all followed by a new Jushin Liger scene in the shower. Now, I don't know about you, but when I order my monster movies, I normally do not order them with the side of naked Jushin Liger. Waiter, can you please take back this side of naked Jushin Liger? I would like to enjoy my monster movie, Naked Jushin Liger Free. Thank you. The next few scenes are people trying to get Jushin Liger back into the ring as he's been absent from action since his episode of Passing Out. The reporters try their best to get a word with Liger, but when that doesn't pan out, they send Miki to do an errand. On her way to the errand, she bumps into Liger, who's sitting by himself on a bench. She tries to start up a conversation with him, but he seems distant and uninterested until she shows him a picture of the new wrestler. His face lights up when he sees the new wrestler, like he knows him from somewhere. The discussion is interrupted by a young boy who approaches Liger and asks for his autograph. After signing it, he bids both the boy and the reporter farewell. In the next scene, Liger is having dreams of training in the woods with a monk to fight demons as a child. This is kind of where the story tries to make itself maybe a little more complicated than it need to be. Apparently, as a child, Liger is being chased and hunted by demons, and the reason he recognized the Viper character is because he looked like those demons to him. A match is announced where three men will have a round-robin style match where two will face off and the winner will face the odd man at a later time. Very convoluted, but okay, I can live with it. They determine via who picks up a rope and it being the same rope as the other one does. It's very strange, but it's a visual component to what they wanted to include. And is to be expected, the first match will be Shinjiro Otani's character versus Bounty Viper. Immediately, it becomes clear that the Viper is no longer being portrayed by the bodybuilder from before. They make a switch to a wrestler who could possibly be Manobu Nakanishi uh, to portray Viper in the ring. It's a bit jarring, but honestly, the best move to make sure that no one got hurt. Otani starts by throwing drop kicks and trying to do damage, but is quickly overwhelmed by Viper. He put him in a big sleeper swing, a banned move in many productions, and then hoisted him above his head and did to Ryan Orff's neck what Bane did to Batman's back. <laughs> J 
Jushin Liger grabs his mask and rushes out to try to do something, but is quickly stopped in the hallway by Viper and his manager. Miki then comes through and confirms that Viper has killed Otani's character. Liger would try to arrange a meeting with Viper after this, and they would meet on the docks at midnight. While Liger is questioning him, Viper eventually turns his back to leave. When Liger tries to stop him, he is thrown to the ground and Viper begins to speak with a demonic filter on his voice and runs away. At this point, Liger knows he's not fighting just some roidy fellow. This guy is a demon. Liger is thrown back into his visions of the old monk training him to fight demons as a child. The vision ends with showing that the demons who chased him as a child are what inspired the mask he wears. Essentially, this would be the new backstory of the character, as the old anime story of a child with god powers just didn't work well in the context of a wrestler. Now, we could argue all day on whether this was a better story or not, but I think we can all agree that it's an improvement because now he's an adult. The next scene would have Miki bringing things to her editor's office only to find a sheet that confirms that the Viper is far more of a problem than they had originally thought, and she rushes off to confront him. She meets him at the hotel, and he blows her off until he realizes she has found his history. She confronts him and grabs his arm as he tries to leave again, but he throws her to the ground. The wrestling promotion then announces that Jushin Liger will face Bounty Viper at the next event. Miki, upon hearing this, runs to find Liger and discourages this fight to take place as she knows that the Viper is a killer and more dangerous than just a wrestler. However, Liger is unwavering and fully intends to face the Viper. On the night of the event, Miki makes one last attempt to talk Liger out of it and then wishes him well. Liger is then hit with a 1995 cell phone call from the bad guy's manager. He does a few taunts and maniacal laughs and making sure that our protagonist is properly fired up for the encounter. Yuji Nagata fetches him from his locker room and we are off to the main event of the evening. The two begin their match and it's clear from the jump that Viper is far stronger than Jushin Liger is. He shrugs off most of Liger's offense until he misses a knee drop and Liger is able to take over and work over the knee. He would use an eye rake to get back in control of Liger and give him the big sleeper swing as he did to Otani before. He would go after Liger and be met with the Kopo kick. After a string of Liger offense, the match devolves with Viper bending the rules and trying to take back control, going as far as to begin to use some kind of superpowers to tear Liger's mask away. This would bring in a new rule into action. You don't spit in the wind, you don't tug on Superman's cape, and you definitely don't try to take off Liger's mask. Liger would begin convulsing and shouting and causing all of the power in the building to shut down. Liger and Viper would turn into nothing but energy flying down the street from the arena, almost taking out a drunk guy. Their run would stop in what looks like a spawn alley, and Liger actually pretty well wins the human form round between these two. However, Viper transforms into a Giver-style monster that Steve Wang is known for creating. And honestly, barring a few nitpicks, this is a great suit with good effects. The Viper creature is fast to try to destroy Liger and almost succeeds in that goal very quickly. After tossing Liger to the ground with a Punjabi plunge, Liger rises up and begins to shout and glow, leading to a transformation to his own demon form. If you're like me, and you've always wanted to see a monster fight using wrestling moves, then this part of the movie is going to be the best part for you.
because Jushin Liger comes out swinging with a full special bar. And thankfully this time he's wearing his clothes. He gives Viper the Copo kick, Shoten palm strikes, and to cap it all off, a Liger bomb. <laughs> Surprisingly, Viper would no-sell and get right up and keep the fight going and unveiling a new ability. He can now cloak himself and become invisible. He begins taking pot shots at Liger since he can't see him and Liger begins to run up the roof of the building. At this exact moment, Miki can be seen approaching the building and she sees Liger in this new form running to the roof so like any good reporter, she follows the monsters to the roof of a building. It's at this time Liger would get to reveal his new power. He could use his third eye to see the invisible demon. The demon quickly hit Liger with a green mist and a huge lariat. With Liger down, Miki tries to save Jushin from the beast but is thrown to the ground. Seeing this gives Liger the strength to throw Viper off of him and execute a Frankensteiner to end all Frankensteiners, smashing the Viper's head into the roof of the building. The Viper would refuse to die, working his way up to his feet one more time, hobbling over to Liger as if to attack once more, but Liger would meet him with one last massive palm strike. The Viper was dead. As soon as he hit the ground, his handler shows up and is melting and screaming right up until they are both hit with lightning and simply burst into flames. I might be the only one and you're gonna have to let me know down in the comments, but for some reason, I feel a little bit of sympathy towards the demonic priest in this movie. I don't know why. There is an embrace between Liger and Miki at the end of the fight, but something about his transformation and how wet and fishy he looks like makes me think he probably smells awful. Miki would scream as he turned into a beam of light and disappears. We fast forward and it's implied that Miki became a religious woman of some kind, possibly a nun. She is shown walking around the town and even stops to speak with the boy who Liger had signed an autograph for early in the film, followed by a tease for a sequel that is likely in production as we speak. It's only been about a quarter of a century. I'm sure they're getting to it any day now. There are a lot of things to like about this movie. Plenty of people have their complaints, but one of the worst ones is that there's no wrestling. And there's actually plenty of wrestling in the movie, and the monsters did plenty of Liger's moves. The movie's fine. It's like watching a really long Power Rangers episode or something like that. Um, the movie added a few good implications uh, to the character, adding in a damn good reason not to mess with Liger's mask. Uh, as if you did, you were inviting a demon to come out and play. Adding the implication that a demon is under his mask would discourage the usual spots of trying to take masks off happening too much in his matches. This happened a few times in his career, but when it did, it was extremely well received to see the demon version of Liger, known as Kishin Liger. Unfortunately, the movie wouldn't be very well received and even today gets a lot of grief online simply because it's not translated. And people only go into the movie wanting to see Liger turn into a monster and have a superpower fight. That's totally fair, but if you've ever enjoyed watching old Godzilla movies where you didn't know what they were saying but you could tell what was going on, this could be for you. Or you know, people could actually learn the language. Far-fetched, but it's a possibility. However, if I had to make a genuine call, I would just edit out the weird shower scene of Liger, and it's basically a kid's movie at that point. Aside from the death of Otani's character, there isn't anything too upsetting about it. Well, Grapple Vision Ghouls, we've come to the end of another video, and I want to thank you for making it this far. Let us know down in the comments what you think about Akari no Raimi. Do you think they should go unearth the original footage and give it a full digital restoration, fully redoing the dub and getting the original voice cast back together, or do you think it should be buried in the dirt six feet under to never be seen again? 
Let us know down in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe. Go check out my channel, Mr. Hartgrave from Parts Unknown. We do a lot of cool wrestling documentary stuff over there. Uh, we've done a lot of partnership videos with Grapple Vision. I'd like to thank Grapple Vision for having me on the channel. Once again, it's always a blast to come out here. Be sure to let us know if you'd like to see another installment in this video series. Maybe we'll make it an annual thing every Halloween. Maybe we'll do more than one movie. How many movies like this are out there? If you know any like this that we haven't covered, make sure you let us know down in the comments below. And we'll see you next time. Still hanging around? If you're still in the mood for another spooky kind of wrestler video, uh, maybe click over here. I've got a great video I did on Abaddon from AEW. I'm really proud of this one. We had a good time making it. So if you like spooky stuff, you like wrestlers, you probably like Abaddon. Check it out. Keep digging.